Thank you for waiting, everyone. special shout out if you're staying up late to see me I appreciate that uh, I'm gonna be uh, playing a lot of songs I wrote tonight most of the show is gonna be my own compositions do a few covers and uh, won't be talking about politics or uh, anything like that I'm here to uh, entertain you a little bit give you a break from your day it's been some week for all of us so uh, kick back and uh, listen to me sing a little bit. This next one is a tune called Motel, called Loneliness, that I wrote. Uh, it's an oldie of mine. I wrote it back in the 90s and recorded it, used to perform it. And then I forgot about it uh, until just recently. Uh, don't ask me why. I uh, revisited it. But uh, I'm sure digging playing it now. It's kind of fresh. I haven't played it in uh, 20 years. 
So here we go. Motel called Loneliness. associate Willie with being this uh, elderly hippie looking dude who smokes a lot of weed and it's pretty accurate but when he was a younger man he was a hotshot Nashville songwriter and he wrote a lot of big hits for other artists uh, such as Patsy Cline, Crazy and this next one I'm gonna do Nightlife which uh, a lot of people have recorded I believe Ray Price had the big hit with it. I'm really fond of this song. This song has three verses, and each verse is only one sentence. Uh, so three sentences in the whole song. And Willie says more in those three sentences than a lot of songwriters can say in 30. So uh, my version of Willie Nelson's Nightlife. Listen to what 
those blues are saying. And the nightlife ain't no good light. checking the comments while I perform tonight. I really just want to focus on uh, doing my thing, playing my music, but I really appreciate hearing from you, all of you. Let me know you're out there. Any thoughts? Please let me know. All right. Uh, this next song comes off my album, Used Man for Sale. This is probably, uh, type's probably in reverse on your screen, but... Uh, Came out about four years ago. Uh, the song is called Arms of a Kind Woman. And I kind of wrote this originally as a, as a songwriting exercise for myself. I wanted to write a song in a minor key where all the chords were minor. And uh, you musicians out there might uh, know what I'm talking about. And this is what I came up with.
all the flowers have started to die. The midnight train rides its tracks. There's no turning back. There is salvation in the arms of a kind woman. In the Hey, I want to give a shout out uh, to a couple of fellows uh, from my hometown of Houston, Texas that I was uh, talking to on Facebook earlier. You know who you are if you're watching. Uh, it's good to hear from you. So, uh, this next song is called uh, Luck Don't Pass the Spy, which happens to be on this album. It's all real good. My latest. There you go. All these albums, by the way, CDs rather, are uh, available online. Uh, I urge you to go to Bandcamp because, uh, well, I'll be honest, I get a better cut of the action if you buy them from there. So, Bandcamp.com, look up my name, and you'll find all of this stuff. <laughs> you haven't noticed uh it's just me sitting here in my living room my family's in the back uh, i did have a cat sitting over here but uh when i started banging a little hard she split no microphone no electricity so uh this is a real back porch style totally acoustic no electricity Excuse me a sec. All right, what tomorrow brings off of Adventures in Bluesland.
show up but uh you know these cats they just you can't count on them for anything um we've got three of them and the thing about these cats uh they all have three names at least uh we've got the shelter name that the shelter game that they came with and then we gave them a name a formal name, and then they all have a nickname. So they all have three names. Uh, for example, our cat, who you might know as Mr. Man. Uh, the shelter name for Mr. Man was Sapphire, which frankly, I, I, I didn't quite understand why they gave a male tabby that name. But they did. Then the name that we gave him is Boyton. It's a long story how we ended up with that. Uh, but we gave it to him when he was a boy. Boyton, boy cat. And then his nickname is Mr. Man. So, uh, yeah, it's a lot to keep up with as a pet owner. But I got to say, uh, I'm really enjoying my pets. With all that's going on, it's great to have them, right? And uh, if you don't have one, it might be a little tough getting one now, but maybe that'll change. Let me tell you, they make good companions, particularly cats. You know, with us all at home, the cats are just going crazy. They love it. They love it. Love it when all the people are here. Like all the action. Okay, hits just keep on coming. Second time around, wrote this song. I think I was sitting right here. Uh, it's a couple of summers ago. 
Might have written it on this guitar even. Here in my living room. to that album's producer, Tony Mann, uh, all the players that were on it, uh, myself, Kenny Margolis played some great accordion, uh, David Fleming, some brilliant harmonica, the great Michelle Butler singing harmonies with me, love singing with Michelle, and uh, Michelle sang on this one with me, what else did we have on this track? Yeah, and Tony played a little percussion, that's right, he also played on that album, forgot, uh, but played some great Great percussion on it. So this one, uh, when I wrote it, I'll admit I was kind of going for an Elvis thing, kind of like, uh, you know, Sun Session, all that kind of stuff. And uh, it's kind of got a country vibe, maybe, kind of 1950s vibe.
showed up and she's right behind my phone camera so uh, things are like rocking around a little it's because Lola is in the house I wish she'd come up here and say hi but she's a free spirit now Lola's another cat that, uh, that has a few names Lola's uh, shelter name was Jubilee and we renamed her Lola and what's her nickname? What's her nickname? That one, just Lola. Just Lola, okay. But well, we still got to give her a nickname then. I don't like, she's the, the way she is. Okay. You heard from the boss. We're just going to stick with Lola. <laughs> I thought she had a nickname. Guess not. Okay. So, I'm going to bring it down a little. I'm going to do a kind of a quiet and spooky one. Kind of scary. Um, another oldie of mine that uh, I used to play, I recorded, I performed, and then ignored for 10, 20 years, and then recently started playing again. Uh, I think if you're a songwriter, you're always kind of looking for the next new thing, and you're always excited about the new ones, and unfortunately sometimes old ones that maybe were better than you thought they were might kind of get pushed down. But uh, trying to revisit a few old ones. So I, uh, I took a songwriting class many years ago at the new school. And for uh, like the class final, of course, you had to write a song. In fact, the whole, the whole class we were writing songs. It was a great class. And so this was kind of my, my master's thesis for that one class. This was my, my final piece. It's called Evening. <laughs> Every night the sun sets 
escape from the pain that fills my soul and torments the day. Nocturnal spirits take over for those evenings I do pray. Great hearing from you folks. Make sure to leave comments, say hi. Tell me what songs you like. I may do this again. I may not, I don't know. But I appreciate the feedback. So this next one. Uh, this next one's one I kind of had in my repertoire off and on. I uh, just started playing it a whole lot lately. It's called Jesus on the Main Line. I first heard it, God, I must have been in high school, on a Ry Cooter album. But I think there's a lot more history than that. I, I don't think he wrote it. I think it's an old gospel song, maybe. Um, if anybody knows more about it, I'd love to hear from you. But uh, this is my version. kind of wrote my own music for it. <laughs>
is on the main line. My lost gospel song that I never knew about. But I'm still trying to figure out who wrote it. I'm lazy. I think it's just one of those traditional songs. But who knows? Maybe it's a, a gospel standard and it's published and someone wrote it. All right, I got a few more for you. Uh, this next one is a track off of the uh, It's All Real Good album. And uh, the music video for this was premiered mm, maybe about two, three weeks ago at the Americana UK website. So I want to thank them. And I urge you to check out the video. It's, uh, you know, well, I'll, I'll tell you a little about the song first. It's inspired on a historical character from New York City in the, uh, oh, by the way, I am in New York City. Uh, maybe I didn't say that. I'm in my apartment in, in New York. And uh, in the 1840s, 50s, around there, there was this neighborhood in New York that was really one of the worst ghettos in the world uh, called Five Points. And a lot of the, the characters, the villains, uh, the good people, and most of them were pretty nasty and villains, but uh, have kind of grown into being folklore characters. And, uh, okay, Lola's back on the table, rocking the camera. Um, why don't you come over here, Lola? Come here. Come here. Anyway, um, so this song is about one of them, uh, Hellcat Maggie, who uh, apparently ran a tavern down there. And uh, it was just a real nasty woman, and you didn't want to mess with her. Uh, I'm going to stand up a minute and move a little away, because I don't want her to come over. Come over. That's right. Go ahead. Go ahead. Well, she did anyway. But we're back. Back in one piece. Okay. Where was I? Yeah. So, uh, this song is about her. It's kind of a fictional piece uh, about uh, Hellcat and Maggie.
Maggie, I know if she finds me, she go and she bite off my ear. Then claw me up and hang me. That's why I'm in such fear. I want to say hi to all my friends in Europe and on the West Coast because I don't see you too much. And I'm glad you're here. Oop. Wrong heart. Aha. Good catch, Phil. Good catch. Okay, this next one is the title track. To my most recent album, it's all real good. Uh, this is another one with a video, like all my videos, produced by Prefab International, Cine. Um, it made its exclusive premiere at the Big Takeover website slash magazine. So thanks again, guys. This was uh, last summer, I believe, in July. So. Uh, Thanks again, folks, for uh, premiering my videos. Check it out. You can see my videos. Uh, God, I have them everywhere. Uh, PhilGamageMusic.com, my Facebook pages, Instagram, all the all platforms, as they say. So here we go. Here's it's all real good. It's all real good. Yeah, yeah, it's all real good. 
All right. Hey, uh, I got one more for you. All good things must come to a close. I appreciate you joining me so much from all over the world. And let's do this again sometime, maybe. We'll see. Appreciate your feedback. Um, there's a, uh, like a digital tip link there. If you feel uh, you want to do that, you're not obligated, but of course I'd appreciate it. Um, at PayPal and at uh, Venmo. So the links are there for you to, to contribute. If you wish. But I would appreciate it. So this next one, my last number, this is uh, another folk song, old folk song, that, uh, God, I just can't get away from the song, I just love playing it. Uh, I don't know who wrote this one, I think it's traditional, but I do know a lot of different guys have done it. Uh, Bob Dylan did it on one of his albums, early albums. And I, uh, I dedicate this to all the women folk out there. Baby, let me follow you down. again. All right?